you haven't already grabbed a seat, now is the time because we are going to kick it off. Welcome to Atlanta Startup Village number 74. Give yourselves a round of applause. We are standing room only tonight, which is kind of crazy, but there's still some seats. If you have an empty seat next to you and you are a friendly person, please raise your hand. I'm going to give you that caveat for all you introverts. Guys in the back, there are a bunch of seats over here. If you want to squeeze through, they're not saving them. They are saving them for you. Okay, little housekeeping. I'm Allie Merritt. I am your MC for the night. I also am the person. Thank you. I also am the person who is in charge of lining up the pitches, so hopefully all the presenters tonight are amazing and fantastic. Um, on that note, it is really kind of scary to get up on the stage and like pitch to a lot of people. So please try and keep any of the chatter down in the back when people are presenting. They work really hard at this, they prep for this, and it's distracting, and then they lose their train of thought, and it's really depressing, and then I have to yell at people, and you don't want me to do that. I have a microphone. I don't want to be that loud, mean person. So please, please work with me on this. Even if you are back by the beer table, we can hear you. So please take it all the way out to the lobby if you need to chat about something right now. But what I hope that you will do is listen to all of our amazing presenters tonight. So first of all, you may have noticed online, actually, let's do this. Who here has never been to an Atlanta Startup Village before? That's what I thought. That is amazing. Who here has been to, I don't know, Startup Villages four years ago? You people, I appreciate you. Caitlin, you don't count, you work here. <laughs> um, I appreciate all of you. The reason I say this is we're doing some changes. So those of you who are new tonight, you won't know that this is a little different. Typically, we go 10 months out of the year on a monthly basis. We are changing that. Starting with tonight, we are going to go to every other month because it turns out when you have a month in between, this happens and like 500 people show up. So we are going to change to every other month to try and get a little more um, time for the presenters to polish, time for you guys to network. And also as part of that, tonight our presenters are actually competing for something. Usually they just compete to be like amazing. But tonight they are competing for an actual thing. At the end of the night, so please don't get up and leave. Give me a hot second to like get the slide up that has the voting link on it and all that. There's a link with a key code. You just put it in. You vote for your favorite presenter of the night. And this is important because after the next five events, at the end of the year, the top presenters from all those events will get to be in a pitch off. Not like pitch perfect, but like a pitch off. Um, and the winner gets two seats at Atlanta Tech Village for what? A, is it a year, Caitlin? Two seats at Atlanta Tech Village for a year and parking, which is, I'm told, a $12,000 value. If you are already a villager, that will go towards your current membership. So help them win this membership. It is important for startups. That was a lot longer than I usually go. Allie, what if they can't make it? What if they can't come to one of the startup villages? How can they ever vote or do anything fun or watch it? I'm so glad you asked, Caitlin. I am shocked. So as you may have noticed in this swiping behind me, there is actually a live link. Currently we're on the, you can use your camera to scan the QR code and tell us what you, what you think about this. As I said, we're making some changes. We do want you to also tell us the other changes you might want. Scan the QR code, takes you to a poll. You tell me all your sads. You tell me the things that you like, et cetera. Um, if you by any means miss it, one of these rotations just went through with a short link and it actually goes to Village Events. This is live streamed. People from home can watch it. We actually typically have about 100 people watch it. A lot of them are investors. Um, and then you can actually follow up later on the recording. Is that everything you wanted me to say? No, I missed something. What was it? Can I vote from home? Oh, yes, you can vote from home. That's so magic. There will be a website on the poll later. So those of you watching from home, hopefully people's parents are there supporting them, you can vote. The, the key code will show up for you at the, the same way. You can all vote from home. So call your grandmother and tell them to vote. Okay, now I have to get through the other part of the housekeeping. First of all, this is live streamed thanks to the fantastic people at PullSpark. They are back here every single time. They donate their time and their services. They are a production company that also does amazing events. So you want event recap, they are your people. You should talk to them after. Can we give a round of applause for PullSpark? <laughs> Thank you, Front Row, for actually giving me a literal round of applause. I appreciate this. All right. So who here has beer and is excited about this? 
This is what I like to hear. We also have a beer sponsor. And our beer sponsor is going to come up and say a few words because they paid for the beer, so they get to talk. That's how that goes. So give a round of applause for Founders Legal. Awesome. Good evening. Great to see you guys here. And, you know, as, as Ali mentioned, this event was a very different one of four or five years ago than it is now. It's very unusual to see this, and it's really cool to see what it has become. So, and also, Ali and Village team, thank you so much for, for doing this, because it's just, this is the largest such gathering in the Southeast, is that right? So, very cool. Um, my name is Andre Tsigankov, and I'm a lawyer, and uh, a partner at Founders Legal. Now, if, as you might have already guessed, Founders Legal is a law firm. We're boutique, we have an experienced team of about 15, and we do business and intellectual property law. We do patents, trademarks, mergers and acquisitions, corporate structuring, a lot of capital raising. And, um, but most, that, that, that's kind of a, a self-evident thing, you know, for, for a lot of lawyers who are in this startup space. We focus mostly on technology companies and innovators from anywhere from the startup phase all the way through publicly traded and everything in between. Now, if you've heard of Founders Legal, what you might not know is that we're actually based here in this building. We're, we're, we've been in the Atlanta Tech Village since, since day one, and uh, we're actually right here in the third floor. You might be wondering, how and why would a law firm be here? Well, all the initial partners, we had our own tech companies that we started right here in this building as well. And we all got together because of that. We went through the same struggles that a lot of entrepreneurs here have been going through, and firsthand, we get it. A lot of lawyers do pay, pay lip service to liking and working with startups, but we actually know firsthand what it's like to wear the entrepreneur's shoes, because we've done it. Because it takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a huge risk tolerance, and just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And that is why I have a lot of respect for the folks who are presenting here tonight. Because it takes a very special kind of person to not just come up with an idea, but to actually start it to actually implement it, to do it, that takes a lot, a lot of work. So, and, and then also, of course, present it in such a public forum as this one for all of us to look at and critique and, um, and, and hopefully later on come out and help. So without further ado, um, I think we really do need to move on to the main event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. And the reason I need it back is because we actually have a lovely team of volunteers. They're the ones helping you out with your name badges and doing all sorts of logistics. If the chairs have to come down at the end of the night, they take down the chairs. So in return for doing that, you get 30 seconds to present. Come see me after if that is something that you are interested in. That's literally all you do. You show up and hand out name tags and you get 30 seconds in front of you lovely people. So first up on my 30 second pitch, David, come on down. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm David Curran. I work for a global staffing firm called Hayes. Uh, we're headquartered in London. Uh, we've got offices across the US, including just around the corner in Buckhead. So we're not in the building, but we are nearby. Um, we specialize in staffing um, for VC-backed tech startups. Specifically, we do CFO roles, controller roles, analyst roles, IT roles. We believe in working in partnership with you. We believe in using the latest technology to give you the best possible service and help you grow your business. Um, so if we can help you recruit into your team, help you grow, or if we can help you with your next career move, we'd love to speak to you. I'll be at the back after the presentations today. Thank you very much. Alandis, where are you? Did I say it right? Yes, you said it right. Woo! Round of applause for Alandis. Hi everyone, my name is Landis Miller. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you guys work for a company that offers some type of team appreciation week or team day? Who do you guys think that you deserve a team appreciation day or a team week? Okay, so what I found is Kicking in Sports, and we are an event-based company that helps plan events for co corporations that are aligned with uh, health, wellness, fun, and team building activities. So if you're looking for someone, some type of day of fun or activities that you wanna help bring your teams together, you can talk to me after the pitches. 
I'll be back in the back, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Chris, come on down. Uh, you should definitely applaud this, because Chris is about to pop some bottles. All right, so 3cheersproductions.com, 3cheersproductions.com. Uh, so my name is Chris. I've been a sommelier in some of the best restaurants in Georgia, and I throw events. My specialty is celebrations, and I have a feeling that a lot of people here are going to have a lot of things that they want to celebrate coming up. So come in the back and talk to me, and I can show you how to make really meaningful, beautiful celebrations for you, your clients, and your guests. Cheers. And are you sharing champagne if people have glasses later? Okay, all right. And my last and final volunteer, Asiya, come on down. Hello, my name is Asiya. Have you ever been dumped and in order to find that, in order to get over that dump, you had to find that perfect song or that perfect playlist? Or you're exercising, and in order to find that perfect playlist, or let's say you're about to finish, and all of a sudden a slow song hits you, and you're just like, dang, I was almost done. Well, I am introducing to you all Mo's, music from your heart to your playlist. So no matter what you're doing or how you're feeling, you'll have, always have that perfect song. Thank you. My name is Asiya Shaheed. My info's in the back. And finally, this is the last housekeeping, I promise. Um, this is a little longer than usual. Usually it's much shorter, I'm sorry. You are actually in a space that has been donated since the very beginning of time. Of time for what? That we were, that we were what, seven years, eight years? Seven years that we've been doing this for Start at Village. Uh, I think the very first one was at Hype, back when it was a place, not just a magazine. And now it's at ATV. They donate their time, they donate their volunteers, they donate their space. So please give a warm welcome. Thanks, y'all. I will make this fast because it has been a little longer today. Um, my name is Julie. I am the community manager here at Atlanta Tech Village. Y'all, there are so many people in here. This is amazing. Um, raise your hand if you are not currently a member of Atlanta Tech Village. Keep your hand up if you are an entrepreneur. Keep your hand up again if you are the founder of a technology startup working on proprietary tech. If your hand is still up, and I know there's just a few of you, I am talking to you. Um, Atlanta Tech Village is the fourth largest technology startup hub in the nation. We house a little over 300 tech startups right now. And if your hand was up at the end, we think you should be a member here. So find me in the back at the end. I would love to talk to you about how to do that. Or you can go on our website, atlantatechvillage.com, and sign up for a tour with me uh, every Friday. Um, but we definitely want you to be a member, and we hope you have fun tonight. Thanks, y'all. All right, who is ready to see some pitches? Yeah! That's what we're here for. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's give... One more warm welcome, get him kicked off on the right foot for inclusion. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, my name is Jabril Suleiman. I am the founder of Inclusion. We connect companies with black, Latinx, and female talent to ensure representation in a rapidly evolving uh, workforce, flexible workforce at that. So there's a dynamic shift occurring right now. Companies like Google, are hiring more contractors and freelancers than they are full-time employees. Additionally, professionals are increasingly wanting a, a more flexible work-life balance. And I should know. So I, when I first launched my first tech startup, I hired freelancers and contractors in order to save money. And when I exited that startup, I became a freelancer myself. Now, because of press like this from the Inc. 5000 list, other companies reached out to me looking for black freelance web development talent. Now, the question is, why were they looking for black freelance web development talent? Because there's an ongoing issue with companies not being able to access diverse white collar talent. And, you know, black and Hispanic professionals remained underrepresented in the tech job sector by nearly 50% according to some very important studies out there. <laughs> so 
That's why I launched Inclusion. Inclusion connects companies with black, Latinx, and female talent that wants to work flexibly. We do this by, of course, attracting a large pool of diverse talent, by launching a freelance marketplace, by launching staffing and recruiting services, and also by providing a community where flexible workers can support one another and discuss flexible work. We're also a social, a social impact as well. And as a, a social impact startup, we provide better, our goal is to provide better earning and economic opportunities for diverse professionals that are out, that are out there. We do this in one part by for, uh, generating $5 and revenue that goes back into the pockets of the talent for every one dollar of revenue that we earn. So here's a quick demo of the platform. Of course, you have our, we have our web app. Uh, we are just web app only. As a client, you log in, you see your dashboard from there. Uh, you can have the ability to browse talent profiles. So similar to some of the, the job platforms or uh, marketplace platforms that, that are out there right now, you can do pretty much very similar things as far as looking at the opportunities, uh, posting a new opportunity on the platform as a client. Um, going in from there and uh, just looking at the opportunities that you already have in your dashboard, if you've already matched with uh, talent in the platform, a workspace is created. From there, you're able to, to message, uh, send files, communicate uh, with the talent that's in the platform. Uh, create projects, milestones, close the project milestones, and so forth. Now, also, if you need to, of course, end the project or dispute the project, then you can do that uh, within the platform also. And quickly, as uh, talent, you will log in. You'll see a similar dashboard there. You can view opportunities. You can view individual opportunities from there as well. You can reply to those opportunities also. And from there, that's the end of the demo. All right, so similar to uh, the MOM project and Power to Fly, we are connecting companies with diverse talent that wants to work flexibly. Um, unlike our competitors, though, we also highlight, of course, black and Latinx professionals as well. Why? Because gender and ethnic diversity are clearly correlated with profitability. So we are raising $100,000 in funding right now, and uh, we have a funding round that's currently open at wefunder.com forward slash inclusion. And so with our freelance marketplace and our contract and staffing services, we're positioned to provide talent, diverse talent, for a flexible future of work. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, right now, our client. Uh, yes, repeat the question. I'm going to do that. Yes. So, what's our biggest client today? Uh, our biggest client um, are teams of one to twenty people. Right. That exists within larger companies. Those are our clients that we're looking for, those hiring managers that are hiring uh, contract staffing staffers uh, within the web development community and so forth. Yes, sir. Um, Two-part question. Sure, and that's a great question there too. And, oh, cut it off. Okay, uh, we have actually here, let me get to that part there. As far as our traction right now, we have, um, repeat the question, it is uh, how many companies that we have on board right now? And the second part of the question was the, the, and that strategy, that's great. So that strategy, first of all, well, let's go to the companies. We have 250 companies that have joined the platform. That means teams inside of larger companies and then individual smaller startups as well. So anyone could use this platform as far as connecting with talent around a project or as far as accessing the contract staffing services that we provide also. Um, in regards to 
marketing as well, we, uh, you know, I did, no, I guess I didn't add that slide in there. But as far as our marketing strategy goes, we're in particular, we're looking, uh, we're using a technique on Twitter to contact hiring managers that uh, have replied to different uh, opportunities that are out there from people who have tweeted about being fired. Uh, and then they are posting different opportunities under those tweets. So they're kind of riding the wave of a viral tweet to get their opportunities out there. And we're contacting them and we're sourcing those people directly through, through Twitter. Yes, sir. Sure. So uh, the question is regarding our pricing. And so this is our pricing here. We charge 20% uh, fee uh, that's charged to the client directly for any project work that's facilitated through the platform. We also charge a 23% margin on any type of billable rates for contract staffing and the standard 20% re recruiting commission for any direct hire placement that's done through the platform. Yes, sir. How do we, uh, the question was, how do we, uh, of course, uh, fall in line with our diverse mission, but still find the best talent? So think of us as an HBCU. And at an HBCU, you're going to see, a, in particular, a whole lot of black people. But then you're going to see a whole lot of other people, other diversity, the, the uh, ethnic groups as well, that are part of that. Their marketing strategy, of course, though, attracts a large amount of black people to that university. Of course, very smart people. But then you're going to see a multitude of other people as well that, that are there, that want to participate. And so we don't exclude anyone from the platform. We have white males on the platform. So, so that's the question. And if they want, if anyone, if anyone definitely wants to join, then definitely uh, we invite you to do so as talent on the platform. But in, in no way are we exclusive at all. What we're doing is providing a direct pipeline to um, a problem that it currently exists and will continue to exist as the, mark, as the workforce migrates from full-time to flexible or on-demand or gig wage. And Yes, sir. Uh, so our main competitors, uh, I named them as uh, Power to Fly and also the Mom Project. So they do something similar as far as the staffing and the marketplace component. They just focus on exclusively women. That's it. We do focus on women as well as uh, in addition to those additional uh, demographic groups of black and Latinx professionals also. All right. Thank you very That's much. Thank you my questions. Not to worry, inclusion, as well as all the rest of our presenters tonight, will be up here to the left of the stage to chat with you, so come out after. So this is where I do a little song and dance to uh, distract you from the fact that this is happening. I have a free t-shirt for giveaway. This is a good t-shirt. You have to be loud to get it. Let's hear it. These are not loud. Oh. All right. You know what, I feel like you won a t-shirt last time, but you did yell for it really loudly. All right, man. Don't worry, I will have more in between because why not? We have had dance-offs for t-shirts, I will accept those. Those also live forever on the live stream, don't worry. How are we feeling up here? All right, we are pulling up our second presenter of the night. Again, if you are headed off to go get another beer, just play and try and keep it down next to the beer station. I know it gets really fun to chat with people over there. Are we, are we good to go? Okay. All right. Let's give one more round of applause. Finds mine. That's not a round of applause. Clap for real, guys. There you go. Uh, I want to have a clicker here. Hey, my name is Lakshmi. My startup name is Prague Brick. 
I am the co-founder. The product my startup is building is called Finds Mine App. But before I talk about the product, let me talk about the problem it is trying to solve. Now, as you all know, achieving positive experiences is getting harder on many social media platforms. Many studies have suggested or found that individuals are facing increased levels of anxiety, depression, uh, fear of missing out, cyberbullying, and many other psychological side effects that are part of social media platforms. And it is affecting their health and well-being. So the question comes, what if, what if there is a platform that can provide a positive experience versus some social media platforms that are feeding a constant stream of stress? Find mine is my attempt in providing that very positive experience. Now, it's a platform where users can share recommendations on positive lifestyle experiences. Now, what are some of those things? It could be anything, anything that is helpful to you at home and around. Now, what is the goal? Goal is to have a positive experience. That is the goal. Let me show you a demo of the platform. Okay, got to switch over. All right. Before you open the Find Mine platform that's live on my phone, before, when, when you open it for the very first time, um, it provides a random user profile for you. And you don't need to provide any personal information. Um, now, if you look at some of these examples here, there are a whole bunch of recommendations you see here from various users. Now, as I was saying, the goal is to provide that positive experience. Here, you see a compilation of somebody is liking a book, and somebody is listing a TV show they liked, and somebody is talking about a date fruit they liked, and so on and so forth. And somebody here posted about a book they liked. Now, the app itself, is um, very straightforward in terms of navigation. So here, somebody posted about a kind energy bar. Now, it seems to you that it is so mundane. Hey, what's the deal with this app? The, the goal is to have that very positive experience. Um, and here, you see a whole bunch of recommendations. Um, let's say that I like the kind energy bars. I bookmark it, and let's say that I like the TV show as well. I bookmark it. Um, here, somebody is talking about a movie named My Cousin Winnie, and I like that movie, by the way, so I bookmark it. So you kind of build a catalog of recommendations through the platform. That is the idea behind it, and you can refer back to them. And so why not spend your time on a platform? It could be my platform or something else. Get that positive experience, then get the stream of stress that's coming through some of the social media platform. That is my attempt. Uh, am I the one to crack the code? I do not know. But, but regardless of the outcome, 
I am determined to find that out in the next few months. Thank you. If, any questions? I go for it. Here, if you notice, yeah, sorry. Um, he, the question is, how do you keep the platform of any clutter, such as advertising? It's a good question. Now, these are all the user recommendations, as you know. Now, if you look at the platform itself, it's totally clutter-free free as such. Um, now, here, it is not a pitch by any company. In this case, I, I don't know, you cannot see here or not. Somebody is talking about a book they liked and how it helped their kids, right? So um, unless you click on it, you won't be uh, like bombarding with all those uh, things. At the same time, you can always skip through them and see which ones you like. So that is the goal and it is not going to provide you the cluster, uh, the clutter. At the same time, the question is, as I said, if you are the person, if you are happy with the social media platforms, this platform is not for you. That is for sure. As I said, the goal is to have that positive experience. That's the goal. Go for it. As I said, um, uh, how do you plan to measure this, right? Right now, what I'm doing is, is I'm in an idea iteration phase. I'm talking to users every week. And the app is up for the past two months. I'm learning from the users and iterating my idea. This is my second iteration in the past two months. So I don't know. Uh, so I'm still trying to understand the users. Is this the platform they want? So I'm trying to understand that. Uh, could you elaborate? I, I did not get it, get the question. OK. What is the? What is the parameter for happy? All right. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> now, let's look at some of the examples here. Now, this dead fruit over here, I just want to tell you, I am a fan of natural sugars. Now, I do not know about this. All right. One of the users. As I said, this app is totally anonymous. If you choose to provide your personal information, you can do so, but you don't have to. Now, somebody posted here about this date fruit. And after reading here, it may not be happy as such, but to me, it caught my attention. I went to Kroger, I got this. So that is how I define happy. Same goes with that other movie I was talking about earlier. I did not know this, for example, morning show. I don't know whether you saw it or not. When Apple was presenting, I thought, ah, it's a BS. But when I watched the series, it was really, really good, except for that, um, the, in this case, the season finale. I did not like it, the way they ended it. <laughs> but the previous ones were really, really good. So, so instead of spending my time on Facebook, I'm spending here. Same goes with this uh, movie. I don't know about you. My Cousin Vinny. It's a 92 movie. And I liked it. I, really, I saw this movie before, but when somebody posted it, I watched it again. So, <laughs> so that's the idea. So that's how I define the happy. <laughs> Go for it.
So who are the audience for this platform? The audience for this platform are most likely YouTube or Pinterest. This is the survey results, in case if anybody is interested in knowing about it. So I would say them. Could be some of you here as well. Or you may say, hey, my idea sucks. Fine. Please give me that feedback through the app. All right. Thanks. Let's give him a round of applause, you guys. You never know what you're going to get here. All right. I now have a set of socks. You know that you want the socks. You don't get any more. Socks? All right. All right. Oh, see, there's some yelling going on down here. You can't get them. You're presenting. Oh. You were first and you were loud. Don't worry, there will be more socks later on. I have another set of socks, I have another shirt. Thank you very much, I appreciate my music here. We're with me now. The last time I asked for music, I got Party in the USA, so this is an improvement. All right, we are on our third. Yeah, there are open seats over here, everybody who is hovering by the beer, unless you just wanna be really close to the beer. There are open seats over here if you want to grab them. Okay, are we ready, JR? Okay, our third presenter of the night. Warm round of applause for the container box. This is where you actually applaud. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. There are three things that we need to survive on this planet outside of oxygen. Number one is water. Number two is food. And number three is shelter. At the Container Box, we plan on supplying the latter. I'm J.R. McNair, founder and CEO of the Container Box. And before I get into the wonderful things that we're doing as a company, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm an Atlanta native. I started my first company at 10 years old, purchased my first uh, piece of real estate at 14. I went on later on to play college football and professional football overseas, at which time I proposed to my wife at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and I did it before Tom Cruise, all right? So, yeah. So I came back to the States. I took about $600, and with that $600, I went and opened up my first retail location, okay? We took in 10 months $600 and brought it into a quarter of a million dollars. Fast forward to today, we have helped over 7,200 plus companies, and that's what equips me to lead our company, the Container Box. All right, so before I get into what we do, let's talk about the problem that we look to solve. If you all don't know, we're in the middle of a global housing crisis, okay? There is just not enough uh, supply for the great demand, the overwhelming demand that exists in the marketplace. Builders are just not building homes below $300,000. Let's talk about the solution, or one solution. Our solution is through container homes. These are cost-effective, yet sustainable housing. We have specifically innovative, yet modern design. We consider ourselves to be the apple of, the, in terms of design, the container um, industry. We have three prone approach to this, design, fund, and build. These are some of our container homes here. This is one of them. This is our $65,000 um, um, unit. This is, we do about 50% uh, in gross margin on this unit, okay? Uh, this is, um, we have an overwhelming demand for this unit here. Full bathroom, kitchen, and everything that's in it here. This is our um, standard unit, which is uh, $50,000. And this is the layout. You see kitchen here, uh, full living space, bedroom, and bathroom. And this is our 20-foot unit. Let's talk a little bit about the market size. This market size, globally, construction um, across the industry is $12 trillion globally. Residential housing alone is $4 trillion. Our target market is $2.5 trillion. Now, this is something you got to understand. Our target markets, we thought were consumers, but who they are, number one, are, um, um, are residential investors, residential developers, also cities, municipalities, and last but not least, millennials that are existing homeowners and those that want to potentially become homeowners. We do have two patents that will be filed before the end of this year. We're currently using some end-to-end uh, -end dashboards to help us in the manufacturing process. And we also um, have a um, full software suite that we'll have in place before the end of the year. We have an extensive network of internal and external specialists that help us to bring this to pass. Okay, 
our business model, how we end up making money. Of course, we make money from the manufacturing of these. And in the next 90 days, we'll be rolling out an end-to-end construction model to help to provide um, extra services for our um, clients. And in addition, we make money on the financing, both internally and externally. Our competition. I'm not going to go along into this, but I will say that the number one player in this field is Katera. They, um, uh, over the past four years, four and a half years, have raised over $4.1 billion to show you the um, amount of emphasis is going into this arena. Now, why are we better? Number one, we understand our end customer and we um, the end user, and we also understand our customers, which are the real estate developers and the investors that are out here trying to make money, but we also, more importantly, understand the end user who just want to get a home and have something. A lot of the millennials that are existing today, we don't have homes, not because we don't want to, but because the homes are too expensive. And, and this is why we're producing this. We have a strong and well-balanced team to help us carry this out. And we also started strong. We have other products that we're going to be rolling out that have housing, affordable housing, but we wanted to stay focused right here. Um, first, establishing what we need to do in, to, in the container home industry, and then going out uh, next and producing additional products in the market space. So I want to thank you all so much. I do have a couple more minutes. I do want to unveil, this is the first time we've unveiled our product called the Fontaine. And this is a product that is our three bedroom, two bath unit that starts a little over $100,000. And this is it here. And this is the uh, in inside here, three bedroom, two bath with an open uh, space here. I want to thank you all so much for your time. I'm J.R. McNair in the Container Box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll take a question right here. Yes, sir. He was saying, what sets us apart from the competition? Our thing is our design. We believe the design is extremely important. As you know, Apple has a trillion dollar valuation because of, number one, their design. So we believe if we go in, not just producing an, some housing that's affordable, but something that people would love to live in. We have luxury, uh, uh, a vinyl towel, granite countertops. We have five foot by five foot windows in these units. These things are some of the nicest things that you would go into. Thank you so much for that question. Yes, sir. So his question is um, a couple things. He said, if he wants to buy one, how does he go about and, uh, buying it? Do we have to, you have to get the land? You do need to get the land, okay? But we help you through that entire process. We have contractors, an extensive network of contractors all throughout the Southeast that we work with. We also can help you find land through our extensive um, con um, uh, network of existing real estate agents. And we work with cities, municipalities to help everything get zoned and going. Yes, sir. Where's the space for the utilities, HVAC, uh, plumbing, water? Where's the space for that? Yeah, so he asked, where is the space for the plumbing, utilities, and all? They're all inside the unit. We put everything inside of these units. Plumbing that's all within the wall units, all throughout there, um, the plumbing and electrical, drywall, everything is in there. All you need to have by the time that we get there is a firm foundation, and you also um, need to have the hookups. We uh, get a crane and we put them all in, we, um, we dump them right there in place, hook them up, bolt them down, and you're ready to go. I'm going to get you in the back back here, right here. Yes, ma'am? Okay, yeah, she was saying, uh, saying our focus. Well, our focus just means we're only going to, most companies, when they go into a lot of spaces like this, they're, they're spread all out in all these different areas. We wanted to just go in with this first product being container homes, but we have other things like light steel construction um, that we're looking at. We're actually looking at um, developing um, in the future um, some of our existing technologies that we haven't mentioned. We have two patents, some collapsible buildings that we have. And we have other things to do multifamily to go up to 12 to 15 stories. So these are some things that we're going to roll out later on once we continue to build our team. Yes, ma'am.
That is a perfect question. She said, um, uh, because your target market seems to be developers. See, when we first started, we thought our target market were going to be consumers. But what we quickly saw is that um, we just put up Instagram posts. Now, this is our first time really going into public here in Atlanta to even, but we posted up some Instagram posts and we got inundated with emails, emails, emails um, from all people. But the number one people who were reaching out to us were real estate developers. We had a real estate developer in Chicago ask for 400 units. He wanted to um, send us a check for 24 million. He said, but I don't know if you can fulfill it. Yeah, I said, I can't fulfill it right now. <laughs> But I told you, I said, we will in 2020. And that's one of the things that we're here for. We're looking to raise some money, okay? We're, um, and so that's what we're looking to do. We want to let people know that we're actually here. But real estate developers love this. Investors love this. Why? Because they're looking for um, ways to, to, to go into the market. They don't want to build any of this stuff. They want to go into the market with an easy product that they could put some money in, make some money off of it, and go to the next thing. And so we're the perfect option for them. Yes, sir, I saw you, and you're in my line of sight. So we ended up um, producing some units back in. He asked, how many units have we currently delivered? We ended up producing tons of units last year, but we ended up stopping because our facility wasn't big enough. We have a facility down in Macon, Georgia, and it's just not, and we're at capacity. So we actually stopped um, taking orders as of uh, last year until now to where we can start supplying. But we are looking at building a factory right here in the metro Atlanta area. So if y'all got any land, y'all know of any buildings, any places, let us know and, and we'll make it happen. Thank you so much. All right. And on that high energy note, there were a lot of yelling people last time. I have both socks and a shirt. I can give you either one. Can I get can I get a dance off in here? Is that a thing? Give me some music. Come on, guys. Oh, all right. He's bringing it. How much do you want it? Oh, he tapped out, you guys. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna have to get two shirts. <laughs> to know that they are not plants. I didn't know this was gonna happen. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Can I get a, a round of applause for this gentleman in the gray? And a round of applause for this gentleman in the back? Yes, yes, sir. That is not what I thought was going to happen, but I like it. Okay. That was much less awkward than the last dance-off we had, just, just so we're clear. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. It made my night. That will live forever on live stream. We're going to make that into a gift. Don't worry. JR, we broke your computer. Come help her. Um, while we are doing that, two things. Again, the um, presenters tonight will be up front. Afterwards, please come chat with them. And then all of my volunteers are in the back, and their information is on the back wall. So if you go back there to see a volunteer, you don't see them around, look for their information, their contacts are back there, et cetera. After this, if you guys want to talk to me about presenting, you just have to be based in Atlanta. you got to be a startup, and you got to have something you can showcase, either a prototype or a demo. That is it. It's a low bar. I say this, but yet only about four people ever come talk to me afterwards. So this is your chance. All right, are we up and running? I'm going to try. We're good. We're good. You can do it, Kendrick. I can see you. Okay, let's, let's give a reassuring welcome to Kendrick with Quick Quick Center. Woo! Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Kendrick. I'm the founder of Quick Quick Runner. I would like to first say thank you, Allie. They do such a great job. And also, thank you to Atlanta Tech Village. They offer so much support to startups and they, you know, give them opportunities. They do a lot of it at no cost. So a big hand to Atlanta Tech Village. <clears throat> OK. Being afforded one of those opportunities here tonight, I hope that knowing exactly what it is that I need and being able to present it to you um, 
uh, with sincerity and honesty and a little bit of enthusiasm that it would open up an opportunity for me to actually get the support that I need to move to the next level. So Quick Quick Run is a website with an app that's designed to build teams of dedicated individuals in each city that are committed to making your life easier by Mm, assisting you with all your day-to-day -day needs, whether it's an errand to be ran, a task to be performed, or just a simple ride to the market. You know what I mean? Um, quick Quick Run is aimed at becoming the go-to app solution for all your service needs and requests. You know, so uh, I didn't just stumble onto this. It started out as a little family thing, but after it got to be too much, then we started to source out the jobs to other people, dependable people, family members, and friends first, and, um, and then I decided to put the app onto a platform and so that I can attempt to build teams in multiple cities. So what I did was uh, I built a website and, and, and added the app to it. Wait one second here. Uh, 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 anyway. The website in the app is designed to build the teams in each city. So what I'm here for you guys is all the technology is there. It's online. You can download the app. You can look at the website. What I need is people to own the locations in the app and build teams, allow me to build you the team in that area, in that city. Uh, Amazon did the same thing with products. They got all the products and put them into one place and made it easy for you to get it and be able to at a competitive price. Okay, so with Quick Quick Runner, what I'm aiming to do is do the same thing with services. Put all the services in one big application and give you the opportunity to break it down, to visualize it into each city, like an Alpharetta team, a Dor a Doraville team, a Savannah team, an Atlanta team. And that way we, and, and I'm somebody's runner, for instance. If you call me, you're not going to call Uber. Most of my people, they call me first. And then they call Lyft or Uber if I can't get them. Because they would rather have the person that they know picking them up or doing something for them than somebody for with a Virginia tag that just came down here to drive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, 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 honestly. So in closing, because I, like I said, I don't got a whole lot of time. So in closing, uh, just, just hit on teams for me, on become a runner. There you go. That's it. So I'm the least technical person in the house, so don't worry about it. I just got a damn good idea. You know what I'm saying? I just got a real good idea. Okay, so, so, right, just uh, right, right up there to right there. Just put the arrow on it. Thank you. That's it. So these are the teams in Atlanta that I need people in Atlanta Tech Village to take ownership of these teams and just start building your team, making contact with drivers in those cities, creating a Facebook page or Instagram for that city, whatever it takes to get you to start running errands in one of those cities. And what is 79,000 people in Alpharetta. If you get 1% of them to download the app, there's 7,000 people in Alpharetta that you can serve you know, and do jobs for. And just from moderating it for an hour a day and paying your drivers at night, you can make the rest of the money for yourself. So, and like I say, in closing, I would like to, um, in closing, uh, I need the assistance from y'all. I can't do it by myself. I need, if you're an investor and you can see that this project got potential and got substance enough to take form, then you're supposed to do it. That's what you're supposed to do with your money, investing in stuff <laughs> that's supposed to work. You know what I'm saying? That's what you wake up every day looking for something that might take off. You know what I'm saying? So Quick Quick Runner gives you that opportunity to start with something new. And if you're just a, a business person, if you're just an a entrepreneur, then it gives you the opportunity to moderate a team and own a team and get the percentage of, the, of every errand task or ride that's done in that city or originate in that city, you can get paid off of. So in closing, I want to say last words is pray for the people who died in this hurricane train crash. It just show you that, that life ain't promised. You better live every day the best day that you can. You know what I'm saying? To end it with what Kobe Bryant said was that uh, he said he say, he say, life's too short to actually be balled up with stuff. You got to put one foot in front of the other, keep a smile on your face, and keep it moving. I, I, I 
thought I, I was done, y'all. I did it. Look, I finished. I'm straight. Look, that's the good part. Okay. Look, I'm going to tell you that if you start a team that I'll go build that team for you, I can get you 25 drivers in probably two days. All you got to do, all you got to do, look, it's going to cost a little bit of money. All you got to do is give them a five, look, if you give them a $5 gas card, they'll download the app and log in right now for you. And you all you got to do is contact them back and tell them, you know, okay, we're going to start getting some rides in the area soon. And as soon as the ride come up, you make sure you pay them for what they did. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay. No, if I'm your runner, I'm your runner. Whatever you need, you contact me. The, let me tell y'all, the new app, it's, it's, it's like that app that's on there is not the real app. I already wrote the specific, for specifications for the old app, but you can't. But, but I can't give them to the app company until I know I got the funding to pay for the finished product. So what you're looking at is unfinished on the app store. But yeah, you do whatever they need. If they need an errand, task, or a ride, they call me first. If I can't do it, I get them somebody they know that I know going to take care of them. They're going to be safe. That's going to do it. And they'll, they'll call you back every single time. Uh, in the back. I'm coming over well, me right now, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You better do anything you can. Oh. Look, what are the range of service that you offer? Ain't no range of service. You do what you gotta do to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? You charge. Look, you charge a reasonable price, and sometimes you come off, sometimes you might lose. But if you keep getting the job done for people, they'll call you back. Okay, I gotta go to this side in the back. I'm going to be whatever you need me to be for that time. And I'm going to get, if I can't do it, I'm going to try to hook you up with the best person I can, like I said. And like I say, in the new app, it'll give you a choice of three people to choose from to be your runner. You know what I'm saying? If you can put a request in, whatever you need, it don't matter. Like a lady put in a request from Yonkers, New York, for me to take cigarettes to her uncle, a brother-in-law in the country every week because she don't want to ride to Yonkers to take them. But I don't got a driver in New York yet. You see what I'm saying? But it will happen. Let's, uh, one more. Right here, ma'am. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. And that's the purpose of building teams. The question is, how can you trust your runner? Right now, ma'am, it ain't but a few in the people that I, that I got. You know what I'm saying? It's pe all right now, it's all people that you know I trust. So that's the first thing you deal with family and friends and not just strangers. So... How you, you trust your wonder? You got to run background checks. I heard one girl in here did a presentation, said she was getting them for $10, but I couldn't get them that cheap. So, you know what I'm saying? Eventually, everybody would have to have a background check. But if you want to start anyway, you start with people who already approved to drive for Uber and Lyft and use bounce off their background checks. <laughs> That's it. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Okay, this is the percent. He said, what's the percentage of the servers that go to the driver? I'm glad you answered. So this is how it works. I want you to own the location, okay? And I want to give you the whole 100% of the whole transaction for you to pay the driver. And you can pay him 10, 50, you can take 10, 15, or 20%, depending on what rating that driver keeps. You see what I'm saying? But me, I'm going to make my money off just a flat booking fee. You see what I'm saying? It's, you know, a real small booking fee, too, something that nobody won't even notice. But you make all the money, and the driver make all the money. So they get to keep all their money instead of splitting 30% of it with uh, the original companies. I still got 20 seconds. One more. Come on. Yeah. Okay, say so I ain't hear the rest of it. Repeat the question. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm gonna tell you how you work it. You better know who you're dealing with. 
That's all too. Listen, no, I need to answer that for real because it happened. Like people ask you to take them to go over there and get some weed and bring them back, but you don't know that that's what you're doing. Your job is first of all to do your job first. You don't, you don't really take nothing. To, come on, you don't take a lot to do with it. Can we please give Kish your? <laughs> Y'all, tonight is a roller coaster. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to compete with that. Who wants socks? That's it. That's it. I, I'll eat it up first. Y'all got to get faster. All right. Thank you. All right. We are on to our last and final presenter. We are plugging in with all of the conversions. Uh, I, I don't really know what to say about this, but thank you all for coming out to this amazingness. I'm glad that this is going to be on video forever. Yeah, okay. um, I mean, usually it's a little quieter in here. <laughs> All right. Hello? Are we, are we good to go up here? Oh, my team? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is our final presentation tonight. Do not leave after the presentation because we're going to put up the voting. Do not leave. Wait for the voting. All right. I think we know who's going to win, obviously. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that, but sure. Um, all right. Do you, you're all good? Ready to go? Round of applause for my final presenter of the night, Ordo Nerd. That was a real hard act to follow. So if you'll just bear with me, I'm going to download Quick Quick Runner and get somebody up here to demo for us. Anywho, uh, show of hands, who here has ever ordered food from a delivery service? Uh, one, two, I don't know, five people maybe? Yeah, no surprise there. So the statistics show um, that 75% of people order food online. And according to Forbes, uh, this trend is just getting started and will be a billion dollar business by 2025. So the question is, what does that mean for Atlanta? Well, we went and found out. We surveyed people in Atlanta who order food online, and here's what we found. Almost half of people who order food online only use one app to do so. So they're typically either a Grubhub customer or an Uber Eats customer. They're not both. In the top right, you can see the breakdown of the popularity of apps. This is specific to the Atlanta market, and Uber Eats is the winner by a long shot, which makes sense. They had the brand recognition. They had their app on your phone. You already had an account. But what we found the most interesting was that most people were only using one app. That yellow portion, that circle, is one app. If you had that black portion in, that's two apps. People are not using multiple apps. What does that mean? For restaurants, it means they need to be on every single one of these apps to maximize their exposure. But that brings about a problem. And Justin saw this problem when he was at a farm burger one day in Peachtree Corners. And he looks over to the right, and he sees four tablets mounted on the wall with power cords coming out. And they're all beeping. And he sent me this text message. He had been drinking, hence the beer comment. <laughs> so Justin sends me this text message and I start paying attention. And then I start seeing it. Everywhere that I went in Atlanta. We have a phrase for this, it's called tablet hell. And I'll tell you what, after this event tonight, you can walk out here, go to Farm Burger, not all at once, because that'd be really freak them out. But <laughs> go over to Farm Burger after this event and just walk in, look at the counter, you will see tablet hell at the farm burger. This is a new problem that has existed because of this new service being offered. And there's a hardware issue. And it's not just tablet hell. If you think about the implications of having multiple tablets and apps that are running all this, think about something that restaurants do all the time, like need to report on all the food that's coming in and going out. It's really difficult when you have apps and reports that look like this, this, 
and this. All different UIs, no central pane of glass for you to view everything. And that's why we made OrderNerd. It's one platform for all of your online orders. One app, one tablet, one pane of glass for reports. So you might be wondering who we are. I'll quickly do some background on all three of us. First, we have Stephen Gladney. He's been a sales rep for most of his career at a place called Scout Mob, reputably, uh, also selling software to restaurants. Uh, he also, as if that wasn't enough, taught himself to code and sells this and builds this with the, all the front end UI that you'll see in his demo. Uh, we have Justin. Justin's been an entrepreneur at places like My Better Journey. And he's the architect and product engineer behind the platform with tons of experience with things and integrations with Salesforce, Zoho, HubSpot, tons of things like that. Then you have me. My name's Greg Klingshern. Uh, I was an original founder of the Sales Loft brand. And by founder, I mean first employee, not actually a founder. Um, and built that brand visually, a lot of content and things along those lines as well. Uh, and I do all the marketing and design for the app with Steven. Uh, that brings us to another point. We're looking for the next member of our team. We have some internships posted on the ATV job board. So if you see anyone, if you yourself or someone you know might be interested, please reach out. All of our contacts is first name at ordernerd.com. Now, who wants to see the app? Awesome, because we're out of time. We have 20 seconds. But what we will do is after this event, we have a tablet here. We'll show you the actual real app on a real tablet. This is before and after you have Order Nerd. It should be a lot easier than it is right now. Questions? referring to, I mean, Amazon used to deliver food as well. Is that what you're referring to? They, they shut Caviar? that down. No. I, I, it might have been called Amazon Eats or something like that. I don't know. But there was an Amazon like Uber Eats. I'm not familiar with what you're, uh, the question. How do we... There are competitors. We've seen competitors, actually. Uh, there's, uh, the question was, how do we handle competitors, right? Or how do we think about competitors pushing us? Um, there's a company in LA called Ordermark. Uh, there's a company in British Columbia called Cubo. There's a company somewhere in Iowa called Otter. Um, the difference between us and them is we have boots on the ground. Right now, we're focused on the Atlanta market. Local businesses want to work with other local businesses. And what happens when you have a tech problem? Because it's going to happen. Wi-Fi in restaurants is terrible. Trust me. We know. Um, if you try to call OrderMark at 10 a.m., it's 7 a.m. in California. They're not even be open yet, let alone come to you on site. So our focus right now is having boots on the ground. And point being... Uh, when I worked at Scout Mob, Groupon was huge, huge. But they couldn't touch Scout Mob in Atlanta because we were here. And that's our mission for now, focusing on Atlanta. Once we get national, different story. question is, are we combining everything, or are we trying to become one of these things? Uh, no, we're just combining. I don't want to deal with drivers picking up food and background checks. Um, so There's right now, we're just combining. Quick, quick runner, I heard does We're, we're going to integrate with quick, quick runner, and we're going to do drivers. <laughs> Partnership. Q2. We're going to do it. Q2, though. Q2. There's a guy in the back there in gray. Restaurants pay for us to integrate. Yeah, question, their... question is, who pays for it? Exactly. 
Uh, restaurants are paying for this. The cons customer, you the consumer that's ordering the food, you're still doing DoorDash, you're still doing Grubhub, you're still doing Uber Eats. We're not trying to put order nerd on your phone. But we are going to the restaurant and removing, you know, making their counters clean and for that and giving, making the reporting easier. We've actually run into restaurants that were in the process of removing these services because they couldn't get online on their numbers. And so they just were going to get rid of them. And now we're, they're keeping them. If it works correctly, you all will never know we're there. Uh, straight ahead here. Yeah. It's, the question was percentage or flat fee. It's a flat fee of $75 per month. We're not interested in revenue shares. Over here. Oh, sorry. It's API driven. How, the hardware, the question was, is the technology <laughs> Hard, well, you got more chances. Hardware driven or uh, API driven? It's, it's API driven. And this guy straight ahead right here? Yep. We, we provide the hardware for them. We use Lenovo E8s that we have paid for and provide to the restaurant at no cost. Question if they break it, then we make them pay for it. We have thought about that idea. Question is, oh, are, as a user, are you able to see? I just got onto you. Are about you it able too. to see where the traffic's coming from? Yes. So, uh, and the user, I think you mean is the restaurant. Yeah, the restaurants when they they're looking at our client at our app, it shows it has an icon, so you know it's a Grubhub, you know it's a DoorDash. The reports as well show, you know, where it's coming from. So you could, you know, see at the end of the day that you know all your you know sixty percent of your orders are coming from Uber Eats or something like that. Um, and you know, to identify drivers, there's driver picks and all that kind of stuff as well. We're about to get hit by We're time, but buzzed. come find us if you want to talk. One more. Okay. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. Go ahead. Yep. Question is, does our app integrate? Yeah, I got it on the last one. Uh, does our app integrate with other services the restaurant's already using, like POS and things like that? Stay tuned. Yeah. Yes. It, Chapter two. Chapter yes. two. First ta was tackling the, the devices, getting those kind of cleaned up. Um, and as we grow customers, we're you know finding out which ones they use, and we're building you know prioritizing those first. Uh, Square, Toast, Aloha, those kind of POSs seem to be the top top runners. Um, yeah, and some people want to get rid of the tablets altogether, so we'll help with that. Some people want to see the, the order on the tablet first before it goes to the POS so that they can kind of adjust it before it enters their POS, and we'll be able to do all of that. Thank you very much, Order Nerd team. All right. My lovely IT people in the back, can you switch me to the voting? And while we're doing that, those of you who got raffle tickets... I have been told that they are going to come hand out the prizes. So if you can pull out your phone, go to menti.com and put that code in at the top. Click which one you want. And you'll be able to see it in real time. I'm going to give you all, let's say, till the end of this raffle. So come on, guys. Let's load, the, load it. Load it. There you go. Sweet. We're going to make this pretty quick. But, well, we've got a couple of things here. Um, one, obviously, the $100 gift card. Seems to have the most takers on that one. <laughs> then, of course, we have a trademark search, which actually costs more money, as does the patentability search. And the LLC formation. And the company formation as well. Might be helpful to, uh, you know, if you're starting a company or if you're looking to grow your brand or protect your technology. <laughs> All right. Who needs a company formed? All right, who's got number 392-9288? Anybody? 9288. 9288. Nobody? Nobody does. Must be present to win. Draw another Must one. Keep going. Win. Keep going. 392? 313. 313. All right, we got a, yeah. we got a taker. We got a taker. Winners. Oh, Thank you, sir. Just stick around. If you haven't voted yet, now's the time. Next one. Oh, 
what are we drawing for this time? The right now we're drawing for a patentability assessment. See if you can, if your technology is actually patentable. Y'all, that's actually not cheap, so pay attention. <laughs> All right, who's got number 452? Last three digits, you guys. 392 452. 452. 452. Yes, right, sir. sir. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. They have the power. I'm just standing here. All right, what are we down to? All right, we're down to a trademark search. Also worth a few bucks. Highest probability, smartest people. <laughs> Last th three digits, 366. Who's got it? 366, anybody? Anyone? All right. All right, draw another one. Last three digits. 366, again? Ah, they put both tickets in there. Oh, y'all. <laughs> Geniuses. 284, 284, who's got it? Yeah. All right, sir, we'll, we'll bring it to you. Oh, no. Still nothing, still nothing? Still nothing. One more, and then we're gonna draw for this $100 gift 431. card. 431, 431, anybody? 431, guys? Yeah! We got, we got one. We got a winner. All right. And are we on the very last one yes, now? Yes, we are. This last is the $100 one. Visa gift card. $100 gift card. All right. Everybody can use this one. I know. I feel like we should do like a faux drum roll. Can you guys give me a fake drum roll here? Let's do it. Yes. Oh. I was like, you can't just pick the one that jumped out. It was escaping. <laughs> All right. And we have... Number 423. Who's got it? 423. I see a All hand. Right. Yes. Well done, sir. Thank you guys very much for playing along tonight and for the fantastic beer. Thank you very much. And now, it looks like that we have a winner. We only have 159 votes. Who's not voting? Y'all, there's like, guys, this is so easy. There's of people here. Really no, quick, get no. out your phones. I can see them over there glaring at me because right now they're winning. I know. I'm, dude, I'm going to call it. 54%. Round of applause for Order Nerd, our winners of the night. You will get to see them again in December, end of November, when we actually do our very final pitch off, as well as the winners of every other month when we meet again. Follow us online. We've got a meetup, Atlanta Tech, Atlanta Tech Village, Atlanta Startup Village. Uh, hashtag ATLSV. Find us on Twitter, and we will see you guys in two months. Thank you for coming out.